Hi, I'm Jeff Gallick from Data Demystified, and this is a quick video walkthrough of the simulation that'll help us predict who's going to win the next presidential election. I encourage you to first watch the full video that explains how simulations work, but I'll now walk you through this simulation. There's two parts to it, the inputs, which are in yellow, found over here, and the output, the prediction, that is right here. What's really important is that this simulation only takes into account the current state of the world. It does not predict what's going to happen between now and election day, it simply says that based on polling data, if the election were to happen right now, who would win the election? This differs from more sophisticated simulations like those used by 538 in that those simulations actually take into account much more information, not just polling data, but also how far are we till the election, what are general trends in past elections that might help us understand the current election, and so on. This is a simple, simple model meant to show you how those simulations might work if they focus solely on political polling data. Okay, so what's this model doing? First, it's taking as inputs all these things in yellow, which is the likelihood that any state is to hand its electors over to a particular candidate. In this case, I'm focusing on whether Biden will win. We could do the exact same thing as a focus of whether Trump will win. It's just the opposite of one another. So I'm putting these inputs in from 538's predictions as of 9-3-2020, which is when I made this video. And what you can see is that I'm just copying and pasting those over. You, of course, can change these inputs in yellow to anything that you want to see how that would change the simulation. The simulation itself actually happens down towards the bottom, and let me scroll down to that right now. The way this works is that for every state, the system picks a random number, and then it compares that random number to the threshold that's defined in these yellow spaces. So let's look at one example to make this concrete. If we look at the state of Florida, we see that Biden's win likelihood is 59.75%. So if we go back down to the simulation over here and we scroll over to Florida, we find that our number is above that. If it's above it, then we actually state that Biden is not going to win. In this simulation, we're going to assign Trump the win for the state of Florida, and that's denoted over here. If we keep scrolling to the right. Here's Florida. So zero indicates that Biden does not win. In fact, Trump wins. And this repeats for every single state. And in fact, it repeats not just for every state, but we go down the rows and we repeat this a thousand times. That's what all these different simulations are doing. It's re-rolling those random numbers and comparing them to the thresholds that we saw over here. It then aggregates all that up and it makes a prediction based on how many electoral votes are allocated in each simulation. And that's all outputted right here. So the most striking things to look at are the ones that are in red. This is the likelihood that Biden will win. In other words, in our thousand simulations, how often does Biden win? Well, he wins 954 of them. So we predict that if the election were to happen right now, based on these inputs over here in yellow, Biden would win 95.4% of the time. This also winds up telling you the median number of votes that Biden would get and Trump would get under these simulations. If we scroll to the right a little bit, I also include this figure over here. This figure is a histogram, which describes the electoral votes that Biden will earn in all of our simulations. As a reminder, you need 270 votes right here in order to win the election. And you see that most of those predictions are on the right of 270, suggesting that Biden is likely to win in most of those cases. And these are the different outcomes that are most likely to occur. To be sure, there are still a few cases where Trump wins, but not nearly as many as Biden. As a reminder, this is a simulation that only takes into account current political polling. It does not take into account the possibility that the polling will change over the next month or so before the election occurs. It does not take into account the fact that incumbents tend to win elections, all it's doing is saying that if the election happened today, based on current political polling, this is the set of outcomes that this simulation would predict. Feel free to play with these numbers in yellow over here and change them as you like, so you can see how that simulation would change when it responds. I just encourage you to wait a second as it takes a little bit of time for that simulation to refresh. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments and I'll make sure to respond as quickly as I can.